From the Tiger Cats Audio Network, this is Tiger Cats Game Day with Courtney Stephen and Mike Daly. Welcome to Tiger Cast Game Day on the Tiger Cast Audio Network. My name is Courtney Stephen, as always, joined by Mike Daly. Mike, Tiger Cats are back off the bye week, fresh and rested, ready to take on the best team in the CFL. The 12 and 1 Winnipeg Blue Bombers are coming to Tim Horton's field, fresh off a 50 burger versus Sask. Now, I don't know what's better. Uh, playing a game and dropping 50 points or getting a bye week and resting your quarterbacks that are coming off of the six game injured list which team right now is feeling better coming into this game <laughs> is that a trick question because i gotta say <laughs> it's the the top of the cfl winnipeg blue bombers i mean putting up 50 and zach playing the way he heals his that defense playing the way they are i mean you know, Winnipeg is one of those teams, and you always hear this, there's this like cliche saying, right? Winnipeg finds a way to win. These championship teams find a way to win. And that's what they're doing, right? You look at Winnipeg and it's like, okay, well, if Zach has an off game, well, then the defense is stepping up and, and making plays, or the special teams are stepping up and making plays. But in terms of coming off this bye week, it's, I think, at a critical time. Because now when you're looking at it, you know what I mean? They get Dane back, they get... Matt Schultz back, you know what I mean? And really at a time that they need it the most and I mean, not an easy not an easy test coming out of this bye week to to see Winnipeg coming coming into the donut box. Not an easy test at all for the three and nine Thai Cats who are fighting for their life, essentially tied for third place, which would put them tied for last with Ottawa. They've got a game coming up against Montreal, who's up on them, and then also trying to battle for what would be that uh, last playoff spot with Saskatchewan in some kind of weird way who has six wins. So <laughs> I don't really know where you look except in for the tie cats and the the best thing about this the most optimistic view i could take is the fact that they still got a chance despite everything that has been thrown at them and all of the close calls the storms that they've been weathering they've got their starting quarterback back in the lineup they're playing at home off a of bye week and the future is still relatively within their control so Mike let's talk about who is actually going to be showing up in this one lots of interesting players to watch mainly Dane Evans back at the helm QB1 he has 2,473 yards this year but the numbers that stand out the most it's the 10 touchdowns and the 13 picks he's been leading the the league in certain categories such as yardage really so it's not like he's been abysmal it's just that there have been untimely errors and not all of them his fault but being the quarterback being the guy who touches the ball every single play he's going to shoulder that blame but having him back in the lineup that has to give the tie cats a lift oh absolutely it does and really at at the perfect time right like because when you look at how they've struggled over the past few weeks once Matt Schiltz went down and you know, the, the uncertainty of who's going to be back there and how they're going to play and the rotation of, you know, Jamie Newman and, and Jalen Morton on the last game. It's to have Dane back is absolutely key for this little bit of a stretch that they're going to have to end up winning a bunch of games down the road. And really what the idea is going to be is what kind of Dane is going to be back, right? Because the confidence that you know, wasn't there for Dane that everybody's used to seeing, right, from the year before or maybe early on when he was putting up a lot of yards. I really hope this break for Dane and this bye week for Dane has given him a little bit of that confidence back or at least the love of the game back, right? Because, Court, you know, you and I know better than anybody when it's not going well, right, and you're not where you want to be and you're not playing where you know you can get to the way Dane has been right now. That, that eats at you, and not just at, during the game and during practice. That eats at you 24-7, right? So 
Hopefully, Dane can get some of that confidence back over this break and over that bye week because they're going to need him, and they're going to need that leader to step up big time down this stretch. And I feel like we need to look no further than a guy like Zach Kalaros for inspiration, given the fact that Zach, like Dane, had outstanding seasons in the black and gold. And then there came a time where he fell into a bit of a rut, struggled, and the team felt it was time to make a change. And he went on to find his way in another situation and have what right now is seeming like a a run that would put him in conversations for one of the best quarterbacks of recent history with the winning streak that he's on in the last three seasons. But my point is saying that it's the same guy. It's the same guy, different situation and different time. Players have ups and downs. Dane Evans threw for 3,700 yards in 2018. This is a guy who is capable. So like you're, like you're saying, hopefully he just shakes it off a little bit, gets in there. I mean, there's a lot of bright spots on this Ticats offense. Looking at the numbers, Tim White, 850. receiving yards only two seasons but that's a career high for him Stephen Dunbar Jr. 748 receiving yards these guys are both in the top 10 for receiving yards in the CFL and I mean Tim White's 99 targets second in the CFL 95 for Dunbar that's tied for third so they've got weapons and they're giving them opportunities to make plays I think the story for the Ticats has been making the plays we talk about opportunities but it's just making the plays. Who are the people who are you're looking at in the lineup who have an opportunity to affect this game for the Ticats on on offense or on defense? Yeah, like I, I look at, you know, one of the biggest changes you can see, Don Jackson, he's not going to play this game, right? So Wes Hills is going to step up into that running back spot. And, you know, we talked a little bit about Wes Hills early on in the season when he came in, but He's a bigger back. He's a big guy, probably about 6'1", you know, a little heavier than Don, right? More downhill runner. And to give him an opportunity against this Winnipeg defense, I mean, (laughs) what an opportunity for Wes Hills, you know what I mean, to go up against this Winnipeg defense. But I'm curious to see on how he's going to be able to help out, right? I know he has good hands coming out of the backfield. He's a big body, but maybe that's what they need for this run game, right? Get downhill, get those tough yards so that instead of, you know, second and eight, it's second and five on that next. So I'm I'm excited to see Wes Hills into the lineup and, and see what he's able to do for this offense. But because there's, again, I feel like we're talking about a lot of changes on this Ty Cats lineup, right? Because it's always somebody new that comes in and it's another challenge, another, you know, some more adversity. And that's what they're going to have to deal with. And they're going up against a formidable defense. I feel like everybody in the league has got to know Adam Big Hill. He's been doing his thing for uh, as long as I can remember. He's always around the ball, but it's not just him you got to worry about. You got uh, Jackson Jeffcoat, Willie Jefferson, um, sales causing trouble up there from the D tackle spot. And then You bring back Alexander, the veteran who's missed a ton of time, but he's finally back in the lineup as a starter. This Winnipeg defense is no walk in the park. And when Zach's not playing as good as he can, they've been able to make some opportunistic plays and keep Winnipeg in the game. It's it's unbelievable, too. Like, they time it up just perfectly for when Zach, you know, is struggling – you know, we talk about struggle with Zach, but he's just playing lights out right now. Like, you see the decisions he's making. He's giving his receivers chances. Um, Brandon Alexander being back in for them, you know, after missing pretty much the whole season with that ACL injury, he was an all-star safety last year, you know, kind of the leader with him and Adam Bighill and Willie Jefferson on this defense. And it's going to be huge, right? Another – Another area you look at with the Ticats is Julian Hauser being out, right? He was very productive at the DN, right? Him and Mason Bennett were kind of coming into their own as the pass rusher. So you're going to see Trey Crawford step in for him and, and get his opportunity against, you know, whether it's Stanley Bryant or, or Yoshi Hardrick over on the one side. Uh, those are two good tackles that they're going to have to go up against and try to get pressure on Zach, right? And, Make him uncomfortable back there because if he's able to stand back there, he's seen all the defenses that you're going to see in the CFL. He's going to be able to find where those holes are, 
pick guys apart and that's where Zach you know is happiest (laughs) yeah talking about Mason Bennett I think he's a guy I've been very happy with there was a little discussion about a a missed tackle he had on the quarterback in Toronto and that's the play that the average fan will point to because it's right in front of your face but they don't understand everything that goes into um, maybe the breakdown of a defensive play so I know he took a lot of ownership of that one particular play because it was highlighted and since then he has been on an absolute tear in the last two games nine tackles three sacks two tackles for loss. He's currently tied for second in the CFL with five TFLs. That's a tackle for loss for the uninitiated. Mason Bennett stepping into his own and in the absence of a guy like Julian Hauser, you got to love the young Canadian causing havoc and and making a name for himself from the defensive end spot. Yeah, and it's awesome to see because you feel for guys when that happens, right? When they have to go to the media and to the fans and say, yeah, I miss that play, and I know everybody understands it. Then just to get that confidence back, exactly how we were talking about Dane, right? To get that confidence back immediately, come back out, have a good game. And, you know, it's really helped Mason Bennett, and we're really hoping to see that happen happen with Dane. But, listen, with the matchups that you're looking at, right, I'm really excited for the Jovan Santos-Knox matchup because – Right now, and you and I have talked about this, and that's one of those things where, you know, you were just saying it with Mason Bennett with the missed sack right in front of your face. You're able to see it. The uninitiated can say, oh, well, he missed that. Jovan Santos Knox, we've talked about this. He's not one of those guys that will just flash all of a sudden, right? Like he will. He'll make some big-time plays, but he is a consistent, consistent defender. And the way Winnipeg wants to attack teams is to run the ball get themselves in favorable second and medium, second and short situations. And this Ticats defense has been unbelievable against a run, which they will need against Winnipeg. And Jovan Santos Knox is one of the main reasons for them being so good against a run. Yeah, totally. Last game, he had 10 tackles. And guys like Dylan Wynn up front, they – have a reputation for wreaking havoc and, and destroying the the pocket so it's uncomfortable for passers but in the run game sometimes a guy like Micah Johnson or Dylan Wynn they're really eating two blockers so that Jovan can stay clean and that's how you get 10 tackles going up against Brady Oliveira who's been having a great season he has 697 rushing yards I mean for all intents and purposes yardage wise Winnipeg and Hamilton they match up very equally both averaging around 360 some odd yards per game so that matchup's really a push but the tie cats averaging a little bit more on the pass and winnipeg averaging a little bit more in the rushing game so to your point jovan santos knox is going to have plenty opportunities he's like the key under the front door mat you can count on him <laughs> to be there when you need him I can't wait to see him plug up some holes. And I know that one that one brought a, a little smile to your face. Uh, let's let's talk about these uh, these smile cookies from Tim Hortons. The annual Tim Hortons smile cookie campaign is back, Mike, starting on Monday. And 100 percent of the proceeds from the sale of the smile cookies will support 665 charities and community groups across Canada to participate in this year's smile cookie campaign. Visit your local Tim Hortons restaurant and place an order through the Tim Hortons mobile app. Now, what else would make me smile would be the trends that the Winnipeg Blue Bombers are bringing into this game snapping and some new trends beginning for the Hamilton Tiger Cats. Let's just look at it by the numbers because I'm I'm an objective guy. I am uh, I'm in the media. I cannot be biased. So Winnipeg, (laughs) second most points scored in the league with 372, only behind Calgary, who has seven more points scored this season, and second least points allowed with 249, only behind BC. Now, that's clearly a recipe to win. Another thing they don't do is lose on the road, which is (laughs) weird because you'd think they have a home field advantage. They've only lost one at home, but they are 7-0 and on the road. And so those are some numbers that would give a team confidence. But with the fact that Winnipeg just clinched a playoff berth, if this one gets 
out of hand early, meaning either way, meaning either Winnipeg goes up by a couple scores or the Ticats come out and really go up by a couple scores. Do you see Winnipeg playing this through four quarters with their starters, given the fact that they've already clinched, they've run up a lot of you know points already? Like, what more is there for Winnipeg to do except try and make it to the playoffs healthy at this point? Yeah, and that's that's a tough one because we're so far out from the end of the season, right? Like, I think when you start looking at it, if they haven't clinched home playoff yet, right? They've clinched the playoff spot, haven't clinched home playoff yet, and that is such a big thing, especially for in the playoffs. You want your fans on board. It just helps you get that energy going. It's always a lot more fun for players to play in front of fans that are your home ones instead of in a way having to travel sit in a hotel do all those meetings on the road right get some jet lag try to get that out of your body whatever it is those home playoff games are huge so especially with six games remaining like this I I don't see them necessarily pulling those starters out um if it does get completely out of hand, I mean, I think you see that with any game, but I really think that the goal for the Winnipeg Blue Bombers right now is to get that home field advantage in the playoffs, right? They need it. And then flip it on the other side. I mean, the Ticats, they need to play their starters all the way through because, court at this point, you know, we try to avoid it, right? This is must win. We're in must-win territory all the way through. This is going to be the longest playoff stretch for the Tie Cats because they got it. They got to involve six games in the regular season and then the playoffs, right? Like you cannot leave it to chance at this point. Like, and is that what's probably being talked about in the locker room right now, or or am I wrong on that? Well, if you're being realistic and you're trying to give yourself the best chance to be successful and not have to watch other people lose four in a row, then yeah, that's the conversation. It's, we start the run today. No, it's not an easy road. We have to go through number one to make it happen, but it's 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 still possible because they're playing the game. If it wasn't possible, they'd call it in, they'd, they'd write a letter, they'd forfeit, they'd wave <laughs> a flag, and nobody is doing that at all. These These guys are pros. If we look at the games that Hamilton has played this season. You got overtime loss against Calgary. You've got a fumble late against Edmonton. You've got um, just key plays that really turn the tide of certain games. Early in the season, the offensive line was in shambles. Everybody was in, in, the, in the medical ward. They couldn't put together offensive <laughs> line. Then they got healthy there. They had a few close games that they didn't really come out on top of. Um, but then towards the end, then they started having quarterback trouble. So I don't know if the record is completely indicative of the talent level of this team. I actually don't think it is. Also, you're missing like a key uh, punt returner who was heavily impactful through the year. So this this is a good team. So let Winnipeg fall asleep at the wheel. And this one will be far more interesting than any of the analysts are going to give them credit for or any of the the bookies for that matter. I don't know what the line is on this game. I'm not the betting guy, but if I was, I would definitely be counting on the Thai Cats to be coming out blazing because they're backed into a corner. What other choice do they have except to call their best plays, play their best guys and give an all out effort? Other than that though, I think as a defense for the Thai Cats you're coming into this one, and maybe maybe I'm wrong for saying this, but you're anticipating your team turning the ball over so you know you have to force fumbles and get picks. <laughs> you can't yeah. you can't have no turnovers in this game. You need multiple, not one. You need multiple because you need to give your offense a little bit of a buffer. Is that the wrong message to send if you're on the defense, or is that just what it's going to take? Yeah, and I don't know if you'd, you know, in the locker room, if you'd say that out loud, you know what I mean? But you'd definitely, you'd definitely be thinking it in your head, you know what I mean? You'd be like, we, as a defense, we need to help this offense out. Mike, Mike, is that too harsh? (laughs) You can't be like the team model, hey, I know we're going to turn over on offense, so we really got to step it up over on defense, okay? You got it? Ready? Break. No, you can't. <laughs> can't Through do that. 12 but, games. Tell me about a trend, though. Tell me about the trend, though. 
hey, yeah, and you know what? It it is in the heads of those defenders, right? Because they're sitting there thinking like. They said, we got to really blow this game open to help out this offense, right? Because you look at Hamilton's defense, and like r- right now, the way Hamilton, and this blow, it blew my mind when I read it, right? Hamilton's defense is first in two and outs, second in the league in yards allowed, and second in the league in first downs allowed, but have allowed second most points against. So their defense is tops of the league in a lot of these categories, right? But they've let in the most points as a so team. D- mathematically, that would mean that teams are scoring in big chunks or they're scoring when the defense is not on the field. Exactly, right? And when you look at that, is that turnovers? Is that short field, right? A short field after a turnover. So this Ticats defense needs to do that exact same thing that other teams have been doing to them to Winnipeg and flip that just thing. Flip yeah, it. right on just its flip head. It. And you and know what? This is how I think they do it. I, I don't know. Sorry to cut you off. I oh, I, like I think that I have the recipe, Mike. I've been <laughs> I've been watching the film. I've been break I've been thinking about this all by week, man. And we need to tell the people of Hamilton the recipe for success. It comes from confusing Zach. If you can confuse Zach Kalaros, that is the entire key to this whole thing. And you do that by showing him different looks and you need to play like a veteran because Zach has seen a lot of football. This is a guy who's passed for like 30,000 yards, okay? He's won three Grey Cups. He is no chump. He's great at improvising on the run. He has a different type of eye contact with his receivers outside the pocket dangerous okay you beat Zach Caleros before the snap you show him a high corner and then at the snap the halfback moves high and the corner goes low and you make him pump and then you get a sack hopefully a sack fumble you line up you look like you're in man but it morphs into some kind of matchup zone coverage and then you have double teams on the inside receivers and Zach has to pump the ball next thing you know the pocket collapses you get a sack maybe he tries to throw it into a narrow window that's how you force the turnovers make it look like zone dial up cover zero make sure that the pressure gets the ball out of the pocket towards the sidelines not down the field those are the ways that you beat Winnipeg in my humble not informed opinion. <laughs> I mean, hey, I wouldn't I like say not informed. I, like, I wouldn't no, say it's not definitely informed. informed. It's definitely informed. I'm, I'm trying, I'm trying not to criticize the coaches, but I, <laughs> I mean, this is what I would do if I was a coach. I would dial yeah. up cover zero. I would dial up match, and I would just make it look like man play zone. Make it look like zone play man. If they do that, they could win this game. No one else is yeah. saying that the Ticats are gonna could win this game, but that's the recipe, Mike. They gotta confuse Zach. And I love that you said that because one of the main things that I want to talk about with the matchups was Tunde and Cam Kelly versus Zach. Because when you start talking about trying to make this defense look a little bit different, and, and you know, if you want to show man and then play zone, show zone, play man, show pressure, don't send any, you know, vice versa, it relies on those two guys specifically the most. Right, whether there's you know the safety is showing down low to show that pressure look like Tunde walking down, Cam moving around at that same spot. A lot of offense is based on where's the free safety and where's the Sam linebacker. Right? Mm-hmm. A lot of offense is based on that, is trying to figure out okay, where's the pressure gonna come? If the free safety leans over to the short side of the field, well that's probably because he's compensating for pressure coming from the short side of the field. Right, mm-hmm. and that's where it's going to rotate to. So knowing that, and Tunde playing a ton of games by now, right? Cam becoming a vet of his own at this point and making big time plays, they have to be confident in themselves and the play call enough to show these different looks long enough. Because Zach's seen a lot of defenses. We've talked about this. He's seen a lot of defenses. They have to show that dis- disguise long enough. So that Zach can be confused because you can't just show up for a half second and then move out of there right away. Zach will figure it out right away. So I, I like and I love that point. Absolutely. And and you can look to the Ty Cats last game to see how offense is, knowing that that's the strategy, how they would combat that is getting 
the Ticats defense into checks. You know most teams play four by one or empty formations, meaning four receivers on one side, one receiver on the short side of the field. They're going to play a small handful of coverages. Maybe there's one that they go to most times. Second down, four by one, we can expect them to play blah, 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 right? So the offense is going to motion into that so they can negate all variables and say, we know what they're playing. We have a play for that. Or the first second down, second and manageable, you know, four to eight yards, I guarantee Winnipeg comes out with a freeze motion, meaning all of the receivers run to the line of scrimmage. Zach is going to give a hard count and fake like he's going to snap the ball so that they can see those defensive backs rotate. Okay, they're, everybody's backing out. There's no pressure. Okay, good. I know that I've got time now because nobody's blitzing. It's just four D linemen versus my five offense linemen. I'll let these routes develop and get downfield. So those are the things to look out for, the freeze motion and the use of selective formations to get the tie cast to check. But, like, we have to go to level 2.0 football here. We're not going to win the game playing training camp vanilla football. It's got to be all the stops. Pull out your playoff plays this day. Yeah, absolutely. And the biggest thing, too, is like you said, if they do that freeze motion, right, it's that experience in the backfield to say, you know what, I'm just going to change the play. I'm going to change the play. I know all. I know the playbook. Tunde has been there a while. Jovan Santos Knox has been there a while. They're able to just say, you know what, they caught us in this. We're switching the play. But listen, there's a couple road trips coming up, and it is hard to transition into ad reads, but there's a red tag trip for four. It's a red tag.ca ultimate Hamilton Tiger Cats fan trip contest. This is your chance to win a trip for four to fly and stay with the team in Montreal for the Tiger Cats September 23rd game. Huge game. Huge game. Fly, stay, help the Tiger Cats win this game. Right. To enter, hit tiecats.ca slash red tag dash fan dash trip. Get out there to support that game. It is huge, not easy. To huge transition. game. Huge game. Huge <laughs> transition. Mike, the transition from Winnipeg to Montreal is also going to be key because these two games are the season. They really are. And and that's really one game at a time. But you know, these two weeks the coaches have been letting them know. Take care of at home, and then we go on the road. It doesn't get any easier. So we talked about uh, Cam Kelly. We talked about Jovan Santos Knox. We talked about Tunde Adelike. Um, what what is the the one thing that the people at home and in Tim Hortons Field should be looking for during this game? What's a storyline? Of course, there's the you know the playoff picture, but what's what's a storyline within the storyline that people can watch? I have one in mind, but I'm interested to hear what you will be watching during the game. Yeah, what I'm what I'm very curious to see is how this offensive line will protect against you know probably the best pass rush in the league with Willie Jefferson, Jackson Jeffcoat. Those two are a handful to deal with, right? They they cause problems all the time for every offense that they're playing and really the reason when we talk about Winnipeg's defense really the reason that defense is playing so well right you'll see Big Hill he'll end up you know adding into the pressure on the blitz and he can really beat anybody on one of the blitzes right he's just as good as a D lineman is out there so that's really what I'm looking for because with Dane coming back having a little bit of a break him having to get going quickly against this Winnipeg defense is going to rely on how much pressure is in his face, right? So these two, the two tackles, right? Tyrone Riley, Colin Kelly, these two are going to be huge to slow down Willie Jefferson and Jackson Jeffcoat. And not just slow them down from getting sacks, right? But slow them down from getting into the face of Dane Evans and making sure that he has a clean pocket to throw from so he can see his receivers, get the ball downfield, make big plays because... If they get some pressure on Dane and, you know, he has to start moving out of there, then bad things happen. And, and that's where I think that I'm looking to see if this game can really break open is with that offensive line against those two guys. How about yourself? And it, 
it, it all starts with a person most appropriately named wearing 51. <laughs> I know a guy named Filer who had a great beard. Now it's the <laughs> other beard stepping in. Can he ID the mic, call the protection and protect Dane Evans? If Dane's comfortable back there, it could be the X factor in this one. But there's another guy. I know we like to talk about the tie cats, but I can't help it. Tie cats fans are so familiar with number four, Zach Caleros. Well, that's how I knew him. Uh, <laughs> he's coming home. Like he lives in Ontario, right? Yeah. His family is here. He's going to have tickets to this game for a bunch of folks. And this is going to be the first game where he actually has an opportunity to perform in Tim Hortons field. Last time he came back with Saskatchewan, he was injured before he had an opportunity to throw the ball. So we saw Speedy B come back to Tim Hortons field with a little bit of extra oomph, some gusto. It was almost as if he drank two Red Bulls before the kickoff, had the game of the season for himself. I have to, knowing Zach, the fierce competitor that he is, I know he's very humble in the media, great guy, great teammate, but regardless of the playoff situation, regardless of any stat line, you've got to believe that Zach Caleros wants to show out in this game. And that could potentially work to the Ticats' favor because a quarterback who thinks he's invincible may try to throw into a window that's not really there. So will Zach show up and be a superhero? Will Zach try to do too much and create opportunities for that defense that is oh so hungry to get some much needed turnovers? I'm interested to watch that storyline. I will be watching it closely because, hey, these fans are as familiar with Zach as they are with, with Speedy, most of them. Yeah, for sure. Like they, yeah, they, uh, everyone in Tim Hortons field will remember the Zach Claro stays when he was playing with like the MOP caliber that he was when he was at the Ty Cats. And like you said, is he going to try to do too much? I, I just, I feel like right now he is playing at such a high level that he's just seeing the game slowly, right? He's making the right reads. He's still able to escape and do all that stuff. Really what it's going to come down to is when, and what I've been noticing too, and where Zach has really made his hay is when a defense sends any pressure or he gets a man-to-man situation. The thing that Zach is very good at doing is giving his guys a chance, right? There's a lot of quarterbacks that'll end up trying too hard and air that thing out there, lead a little too much. What Zach does is when he throws that ball up, he gives his receivers a chance to just go win it, right? And he's he is the best quarterback in the league at seeing when the defense is a man-to-man knowing his route that is going to give that one-on-one matchup even if the receivers beat him or not he throws that thing up there gives that receiver a chance and that's where Winnipeg blows these games open is because they get these explosions where that receiver will win that 50-50 ball and that's where the Ticats DBs are gonna have to step in and really make some big time plays when Zach sees man-to-man he knows the route he wants to go to and he gives that receiver a chance the Tyke SDBs have to come down with that to flip this game. Please, please identify Dalton Schoen before every play. <laughs> the young man has 10 receiving touchdowns. He is making quite the name for himself. And regardless of if you knew him coming into the season or not, he's averaging 17 yards a catch. That means that these are the plays where he's showing up. It's the ones where... Zach is outside the pocket, directing traffic like a point guard. Who ends up on the other end of it? Dalton Schoen. So Winnipeg, they're coming into Hamilton, and then it's Montreal. They've got Sask. They've got Calgary. Ottawa, Ottawa, you could win a trip to the Ticats Ottawa 29 away game against the Ottawa Red Blacks with Journey Rewards. Simply hit tiecast.ca slash journey dash rewards to enter to win two tickets on Via Rail, hotel and game tickets, plus a chance at other prizes, including an autographed Ticats jersey or $250 gift card to the Ticats shop. 
go on the road with the tie cats to Ottawa with journey rewards right after they face off with the best teams in the CFL, really. Everybody yeah. who is standing between them and a playoff race is is coming up. Winnipeg, Montreal, Sask, Calgary, Ottawa, Ottawa. But it starts tonight, starts this afternoon with the 12-1 and Bombers coming to Tim Hortons Field. Kickoff, 4 p.m. Luke and RJ got the call before that. Bubba and Andy on the pregame. Of course, if you can't make it to Hamilton, you can't make it to the donut box, listen.tiecats.ca is the best place to catch the action. As always, we're grateful for you spending your time with us. And until next time, for Mike Daly, I'm Courtney Steven. Have a great game day. It's game day and you're ready. So are we. Let us know your thoughts. Email us at gameday at tiecats.ca. Courtney Steven and Mike Daly are here every game day with their insights into today's game. Subscribe to the Tiecats Audio Network on Spotify or wherever you get your podcasts.